Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Crash Stash Games, and it is called Chicken Time Warp. Chicken Time Warp is a game where you can play from three to six players, ages 14 and up, and takes about 20 minutes to play, maybe 30 minutes to play, in which you're going to be getting cards in your hand. You'll be playing across a certain 10 minute period in the game, and uh, you're going to be trying to uh, gain the escape pod and get out when the escape window is open. Now, of course, it can be open at certain times and not at others. You might die before that, and you can also come back to life. It's a game similar to games like uh, Kitten Casualty and Exploding Kittens, but in this you're playing with chickens and you're also using time as a variant as well. If that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and let's go down and we'll check out the game and all the components. So here we have the game Chicken Time Warp and everything that it comes with. Okay, as you can see here, you're going to have 11 cards, the escape window, one all the way to 10, and that is going to be your time period throughout the game. I just went ahead and revealed these so you get a good look at them, but when you're set up, you're simply going to have all of these face down, and they could also be in a whole straight line, but to save room on the camera, I just went ahead and made a little snake-like design. It'll go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and you can see how it goes. Then, you're also going to have these handy cheat sheets here and different characters, whether you want to be Rufus or Ash or perhaps Lucy, Sarah, Donnie, or even Kira. These are all the different chickens you can use, and they're all basically the same with different artwork. It'll come with a rules book and, of course, the box of play. It'll come with a big stack of cards here that are all different things like Reverse, Super Thiefs, uh, the Escape Pod, Swapping Hand, Peekaboo, and all that other good stuff. And, of course, course, the interesting aspects of the game, which is the time slipping away and you dying. You dead. Uh, when you start the game off, you're going to simply go ahead and take all of the you dead and time slip away cards out of the deck, and depending on the number of players you're playing, so let's go ahead and say we're playing with a three-player game, you'll take uh, four cards from the deck here for all the players and give them those cards. Then you will take all these additional cards here and add them to the deck, because you don't want to start with these black cards. Similar to like Exploding Kittens and Kitten Casualty, there are cards in here that once you draw them, things will happen in the game that will either benefit fit you or harm you and so you don't want to start with those in the game if you don't want to go ahead and take them out every time what you can do is you can deal out every player four cards and then if they have those cards we will put them aside and then you'll deal them new cards until all the cards that are no longer black then you can put them back in the deck and shuffle it after you've gone ahead and done that you're going to go ahead and select a first player and then you can go ahead and shuffle this deck and begin the game which we'll talk about your turn above right now Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about a turn. Now, obviously, you're going to get one of these chickens to start with, and they don't have anything special on them, but they have different artwork. And these guys will be used on your timeline if you pass on. Uh, you also have these cards in your hand, and it's pretty simple how it works. At the beginning of your turn, you're going to flip over one of the window cards, and it goes from 10, 9, 8, 7, so on and so forth. And, and then you're going to go ahead and play a card from your hand. And you can choose to play it on, on any of these cards, any of the players, provided you can, or you can save them. Some of them are going to allow you to uh, prevent yourself from dying. Some of them will will make you able to swap hands with your opponent, and others will uh, make you maybe freeze a turn or steal something from somebody. After you've played one of your cards, you're going to go ahead and draw a card. If it is a black card, like the... Um what are they called? The, the You Dead card or the Time Slips Away card, then you're going to do something on the window area. And if not, you're going to simply keep that card. And it's going to play is going to pass left and it's going to continue to go around in a circle until eventually the game is going to have this escape window open. And when that escape window opens, a player can play the escape pod card, provided they have it in their hand, and they will win the game. It's pretty simple, as you can see. However, players are going to try and figure out who has that pod, whether it's still in the deck. And then if they, if they know you have it, you're going to try to steal it from you as well as keeping that window closed so that you can't simply escape with it and it's going to continue to go like that until somebody is able to play that escape card escape pod along with the window being open and thusly win the game uh so let's go ahead and down, down below i'll show you a three player game we'll go through a couple turns and then i will come up and we'll talk about the game and review it so we're back down here with chicken time warp and i went ahead and made sure that the deck is all set up every single player has their four cards you got the rules and the booklet that we will not need uh and then of course every player needs to have their chicken so let's go ahead and give everybody a chicken. We'll be playing with Donnie, Kira, and Sarah over here. The rest of the chickens won't be needed. And uh, this little handy-dandy cheat sheet can be useful. It's got a front and back that explains the different cards and what they do. If you already know how to play the game, you won't need that as well. Uh, we're going to set the window at 10. That'll allow the first player to go. So he's going to flip one of these guys over. Going to go ahead and look at his hand now. He's got a swap hand, super thief, clucks, capacitator, and a cryogenic freeze. Uh, so he's going to get to play a card. So he'll play a card on this player here. Uh, request a specific card from a player's hand if they have it give it to you if they don't they get to keep it so super thief is what i want if there is one he doesn't have one so he loses nothing and he draws a card oh 
Bam, that was pretty quick. You dead. When a you dead card is drawn, if you have a Clux Capacitor like this guy here, you can go ahead and play it. If you don't, you're going to send your chicken to the space, the space over here, based on whatever space is the current most highest open space. Uh, but because he do has a he does have a Clux Capacitor, you can simply go ahead and discard the Clux Capacitor and uh, put this card into the discard pile. And now he can go ahead and reverse time by simply going back uh, three minutes. Now in this case, there's only one minute, and so no big deal. And when he does that, uh, he's gonna go ahead and end his turn after that. The next player is gonna go ahead and get to go. Uh, simply gets to choose to play a card. Now you can choose to you can choose to go ahead and flip over. You have, you have to flip over one of these cards here, but you could choose to play Clux Capacitor card um, either by protecting yourself from the you dead, or you can choose to play it just to go back in time, whether it is to bring back somebody from the dead, or if you want to uh, stop somebody else from winning the game here at the escape window. Uh, he can go ahead and play this stockpile, which is going to allow him to draw two cards instead of one. At the end of your turn, you're always gonna draw one, but in this case, he gets to draw two, which is actually useful for him, so that's good. You got a peekaboo and a cryogenic freeze. The next player is then going to get to go, I'm flipping over one of these things here, nine minutes to the window, and he gets to play one of his cards. He can swap hands with another player, and he's going to definitely do that. He'll discard this card here, and he'll trade here. Now, if, they, if he has a block swap, which he doesn't, uh, he will then... Uh, so he's going to go ahead and switch. So he's got this one here, and this player's getting this one here. That was his one card he got to play. So then he draws a card. It's a time slips away, which means this card is gone forever. It's going to be removed from the game. So even if he does have a freeze... Or, or not a freeze, sorry. Even if he does have a Clux Capacitator, it's not going to get back down to 10. After that happens, the next player is going to get to go, flipping over one of these guys here. He choose to play one of these cards here. A swap hands. He'll go ahead and choose to play it on the big guy over here, thusly swapping hands. And then, of course, drawing a card. It's the escape pod. This is a card you want to definitely keep secret. If you have this card here by the time this is open and you simply play this card, you win the game. So that is a nice card to keep face down. Next player's turn, flipping over this in here. He actually has a swap hands card as well and a swap lop block. So he can go ahead and swap with this guy here, which is definitely something he wants to do. And now he actually has the escape pod. He's gonna have to draw one of these cards here. He has another swap hands here. And next player's turn, flipping it over. And it'll continue just like that. And as you can see, these windows are slowly gonna get closer and closer to the escape window. And the player who ends up having this card at the end is going to win. That's the basic idea for the game uh, of Chicken Time Warp. All right, let's come up and talk about it. All right, so a couple caveats first to make sure I explained how death works pretty well. So whenever you get a you dead card, if you don't have a Clux Capacitator based on the window that is currently open, so it could be 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and the 6 is the most recently one flipped, that is where your character is going to go. So Sarah would go on the 6. Now the game will continue and you will be out of the game, and if you happen to have the escape pod when you die, you're going to have to give it to the person on your left. Um or the person farthest away from the first player, basically. And after you've done that, then the game will continue. But if somebody else dies or chooses to use the Clux Capacitator, let's say it goes to four, then uh, playing this card here will make it go back to five, to six, to seven, in which case you would then come back into the game because you have been revived. The, the act of you dying did not happen, and thusly you're alive again. Um, Another thing to note, too, is if you die on a 6, let's say, and the board has a 5 and a 4, and somebody draws this Time Slips Away card, and the 6 is the last one left on the timeline, the most farthest one down, there's no 7, 8, 9, or 10 anymore, and the 6 goes away, and you are on it, you will also dip away. Or if you're on the 9, and Time Slips Away, and, you're, and the last one is the 9, you're also going to dip away, and you cannot come back. Those cards will never come back as well. Um, and like I said, you can use the Clux Capacitor regardless of whether or not you draw... Uh, you could play it twice if you have two of them on your turn. You play one, and then when you draw a card, you can play uh, play this again if you have another one in your hand. But it's always going to come back to the time in which uh, is the farthest along on... So three uh, down the track. And that's the basic idea. I wanted to go ahead and get those out of the way to make sure it gives you a better example um, in case I made it, not, made it more confusing than it needed to be. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some of these cards here, okay? Before we get into it. You have Super Thief, and this is the review portion now. Super Thief can steal any requested card to, from another player, and if they have it, it's yours. This card should probably not say, this card should have the exception of Super Thief should not be able to steal other Super Thieves, because that is rather agitating, and all of us had an, an, an agitated time playing it, because 
when you know there's a card that can do specific things like this, you're going to want to utilize it. So I choose you for Super Thief. Do you have one? Yeah, you do. Okay, great. I'll take that card. And now I'm going to play Super Thief on you, uh, you again, or somebody else is going to get rid of all the Super Thieves so that only I have them. Makes it more valuable because then you can use it to steal escape pods. That was just one little small thing there. Uh, swapping hands with another player just allows you to trade hands. It can be very, very beneficial. And I like that card, but the swap block card, it just prevents you. So which also is a dead to turn in an incense. And uh, I think it should include either drawing an extra card when you play this or simply saying that a swap hand can block another stop hand, a swap hand. And so that way you can have just more swap hands in the game. Uh, then you have reverse, which is okay when there's multiple players playing the game, but when there's only three, maybe four, or it's down to two or three players, it's not as useful. But I see how a lot of these games utilize it. And then cryogenic freeze. It seems like it would help uh, in a, a multiplayer game, but in a smaller player game, yet again, if I play it on my, if there's only two player people left, I play cryogenic freeze on you. You freeze for a turn, you can't do anything. I simply just get to draw another card and the time goes down another spot. It's not as beneficial, I suppose, as it could be. Um, so those cards I have a, an issue with, not terribly, but they were like, you know, I would rather see more different actions, or if they're blocking cards, I want them to give you some other kind of a bonus or option. Like I said, the Clux Capacitor is the coolest card in the game because it gives you two options. It's not like, like the, uh, Exploding Kittens card that like blocks the exploding on you, but this one also lets you go through the time. The best part about this game is definitely the timeline in which as you die, you can come back to life and play progresses regardless of whether you're in the game or not, whether you fade away or not, but you still have the opportunity to come back into the game and, and score yourself uh, a victory. Uh, the You Dead cards, it's really weird to say You Dead, not not Your Dead. I don't know if that's a mistake or not. It's kind of funny, but it's just like, is that a mistake? I don't know. And uh, it, it's similar to the Exploding Kittens as aspect, but instead of placing it on the top of the deck or, or putting it wherever you want, you can't do that. It's just going to go through the deck, and players are going to die based on these cards or whether they have these capacitors. You're going to shuffle the deck afterwards. Overall, it's not super nuanced. Uh, as far as the game goes, like it, it's definitely an exploding kittens type of a game. But what is interesting and what I do like about it is the windows, the aspect of the game progressing and players being able to come back in as opposed to being kicked out. I think that the character should have uh, added a, some kind of ability on them or some kind of use, use for them. Um, and there's quite a few things you can actually add to them, which is kind of cool based on the fact that there's a timeline. If this character dies on six or something like that, you get some kind of bonus. So you get to come back to life. Uh, the escape bot is cool. This is a really interesting aspect of the game, too, because it's the winning uh, aspect of the game in which if you get to that last escape window and you have the pod, you're going to win, but everybody else is kind of ganging up against you. It's fun. It's an interesting little game. I think most people are kind of going to be like, they've, they've seen games like this, and what will deter them What will deter them is the basic nature of the game as far as it's the, it, others have been done, but will actually interest them and may get them to back the game. And what might have gotten me to back the game, if I, if I wanted to back it, would be uh, the mm, escape window windows and the fact that it has this added new mechanism as far as a timeline goes that you can lose but still come back into the game and it in involves the theme of it which is really cool like the fact that these are added to the game and how it functions makes the game a lot of fun in that aspect uh, my cameraman didn't like this game my wife in enjoyed it she said it was all right and I, I think it's all right as well i like the additional add-on to this if it didn't have this i'd be like eh, it's same old same but adding that additional thing there gave it some interesting touches i think it'd be cool like i said to add additional character abilities as well as maybe some additional cards to the game and uh swipping swatch switching the defensive cards to just simply being cards of the same nature and then adding the fact that those cards can block each other would probably be good at, at it as well. Anyway, that's my uh, review for the game. Uh, you can go ahead and check it out on Kickstarter in the description below if it sounds like something is, if it, if it sounds like this is interesting to you. I'm bluttering here. Uh, thank you, and let's go ahead and cut to the outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If this interests you, go ahead and check it out in the description below for Chicken Time Warp. Another interesting thing, too, is if everybody gets super abilities on this game or some kind of ability, when you, if you use your ability on a certain time and uh, you, put, you put a marker on that specific window, so if you use it on nine and you put, you put your ability on nine, if you ever go back to that space, you actually can get your ability back. I think that'd be super cool, too. There's little things that you can add to make this game really fun. Um, but overall, well, we'll see what they do on the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, as well as go ahead and check our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. They've got tons of giveaways going on, including two at my site right now. We're giving away, actually, one right here, Utter Nonsense. A little crazy, uh, I guess, a little, like one of those party card games. 
And we're also giving away another one called How, Ga How Game Are You, a, a relationship-based game. Uh, that's all I got for this time, guys, and I appreciate it. And as always, I look forward to uh, going through the chicken time warp with you. Ah,